got a couple of 19-year-olds uh, uh, that uh, you know we feel are, are going to be uh, capable uh, players uh, on defense. Nathan Boyer is going to be a great player in our league. Uh, you know, it's uh, very exciting to you know see a, a player like that you know, commit and uh, choose to come to your program when he had a, a lot of different options. And, you know, Zane Morin and Skylar Ladoon, uh, you know, are, are question marks right now. They're, they're in the, uh, uh, their respective uh, Western Hockey League camps and uh, we'll just have to see how that goes. And, uh, but they're, uh, they're definitely good young players that have signed with us so we know where they're going if, uh, you know, if they're not successful in making the Western Hockey League. Uh, you know, we, uh, Justin Duchesne, uh, uh, Justin Ducharme rather, is, uh, you know, a player uh, that uh, looked good out in the ice today. I watched uh, the boys skate a little bit uh, this morning and, uh, you know, he skated in the northern camp and, uh, you know, uh, he's going to be uh, a top six forward in our league. So, we, you know, we do have, you know, some exciting players that have arrived and, uh, you know, seem to be uh, gelling well with the other guys. Now, some people would be tempted to call this a, uh, I guess, a rebuilding year. Um, I guess the question would be, is it as much of a rebuild as the team experienced, say, two seasons ago, or is it uh, something where you think you can keep, kind of keep the momentum going and have uh, a, a quite a competitive team this season? Well, I think we're going to be competitive. I think it's very important that we sustain the momentum that uh, you know we had at the end of last year. Uh, you know, for the team, uh, obviously, uh, you know, to keep the the fans excited and uh, and the support uh, uh, that we uh, enjoyed at the end of last year. I, I think it's important that that uh, keeps going. And uh, you know, I. I think that we're, in all honesty, a little further ahead this year uh, on this date than we were last year in our, in our recruiting, uh, you know, in our uh, ingredients, you know, for building a team. So, you know, I, I'm pretty uh, optimistic about this season. I, I uh, can't guarantee a championship. Uh, there was uh, certainly a lot of uh, heart and soul that uh, went into. Uh, uh, winning the the cup last year by our players and uh, and as we mentioned uh, a lot of them are are playing elsewhere now yeah uh, a couple other things i want to ask you about a couple quirks to this season first off um, a very unusual schedule as far as uh, the ice holes are concerned uh, you begin with four straight home games in fact you don't play a road game at all in september your first uh, road game of the season i believe is october 8th and then that'll be the start of like something like six road games in nine days. Uh, you also end the season with uh, four games on the road, I believe. So obviously a little bit different schedule than you're used to seeing your take on the schedule for you guys this year. Well, it certainly wasn't by design. And, uh, you know, the schedule is what it is. Uh, you know, there's a, a reason why we're, we're not on the road early. Uh, we have four rinks that are, uh, you know, not in operation. Uh, for the first three weeks to a month of the season, uh, and they, uh, they're all, uh, uh, you know, included in, in uh, road swings that we have to schedule, uh, you know, for economic purposes. Uh, Nip One's <coughs> uh, rink is not operational uh, to start with. Humboldt, uh, Kindersley, and Weyburn are all uh, under construction. Uh, I don't know exactly what dates they'll be getting in, but they needed to schedule uh, accordingly and uh, you know be a little bit uh, safe in their uh, estimation of when the projects were going to be finished. So it, it, I don't think anybody's got a great schedule. Certainly, uh, it's a schedule that I wouldn't have uh, uh, built. Uh, you know, there are a few quirks in it, certainly, that uh, I would have liked to have avoided, but, uh, you know, it is what it is. All right. And the other thing that's uh, new this season is um, this two-year pilot project that the SJHL, along with four other Junior A loops in the country, are trying this year, the Junior A Supplement, uh, which um, is apparently aimed at reducing uh, with, uh, bullying and violence on the ice uh, 
includes uh, all kinds <coughs> of efforts, uh, cracking down on goaltender interference, uh, staged fights, instigating fights, um, and just fights in general. Um, I believe um, basically it caps the amount of fights at, uh, <coughs> at, at five, uh, including uh, playoffs per season. So what is your take on uh, what the SJHL and the other leagues are, are trying to do there? Well, I think it, it speaks for itself. It's a, you know, it's a project that uh, is trying to get rid of uh, you know, the unnecessary violence and uh, you know, not just uh, in terms of fighting, but uh, you know, the goaltender interference, uh, you know, high hits, checks from behind, uh, cheap shots and, uh, and that sort of thing that uh, you know, we feel that it is going to be good for the game in the long run. And uh, you know, it's not that uh, you know, all of a sudden somebody decided to take it out. It, it, you know, it's been a process and, it, you know, it's just, uh, you know, the fact that uh, they've put some uh, rules in place to, to try and legislate, uh, you know, the uh, uh, major penalties and, and uh, you know, the, the violence, uh, it's not really not necessary. And, uh, and, you know, the bullying that uh, may or may not go on. Right. Okay. Well, Bob, uh, thanks very much for uh, being on the program this evening and best wishes this season. Thanks very much, Kelly. All right. Well, if you're just joining us, uh, we have been talking with Ice Wolves head coach and director of hockey operations, Bob Beatty. We'll be right back with From the Stands. To Ice Holes Insider, and it's now time for From the Stands. And uh, this season, we thought we'd actually do this from the stands. And we're joined in our inaugural uh, show of the season uh, by Darwin Roy, Scott Boys, Curtis Skalicki, and Keith Kratchmer. Uh, gentlemen, uh, welcome to the program. Thanks, Thanks Kelly. Thanks, Thanks Kelly. Kelly. All right. So, uh, I was asking Bob earlier in the show uh, what do the Wolves do for an encore given you know, the hugely successful year? Uh, some would say uh, somewhat unexpected success they had last season, winning an SJHL championship. Uh, what do you guys see uh, happening this year? Obviously, the team lost a lot of veterans, uh, both in terms of graduation and in uh, trades and futures deals. Uh, how do you see this unfolding this season? I'll start with you there, Scott. Um, I think they're going to be competitive. Will they repeat? Well, it's far too early to say that. And they are losing uh, a lot of guys, uh, a lot of experience, a lot of skill. But with that said, there's actually some key components returning. Uh, and a lot of coaches will say, well, it's always good to build from the net out. And uh, job one is accomplished already because Bartko is back. It's kind of unfortunate we couldn't keep Dan Luck as well, but you're never going to keep two goalies the same age of that quality. And it's not fair to those goalies either. So you always want one starter and one backup, one protege. Uh, I'm curious to see who Bob will have in as the, uh, as the second goalie. But if we're building from the net out with Bartko, we're already uh, doing very well. And we've got key guys back from last year, uh, led by Lyndon Smith, the scorer. Yeah, it should be really interesting to see how Lyndon Smith and Correa, Egham, Pillar, these guys who shot, how they do this year. Uh, Curtis, uh, how do you see this year unfolding? Could be a lot of 9-8 games. <laughs> we're loaded up front, there's no doubt. Uh, Goaltending is great. Uh, you know, Bartko won our first three series, and he probably would have won against uh, Yorkton last year as well. But I mean, Danilak came in and had that chip on his shoulder to take him and took him out. Uh, defense, we got a couple of 18 year olds that are committing, uh, committed to us. Who knows how they're going to end up? Uh, but you know, when you lose the quality of those top four defensemen from last year, uh, even Bob has said that that's a dream defense core. You're go not going to get that. You're going to get that once in a lifetime, and that's mm -hmm. what we had, and that carried us to there. So um, Bob's got some stuff up his sleeves. You know, sure, we don't have a lot of uh, uh, trades and futures and stuff, but you've got some assets that he can make things work. And, uh, you know, I watched a couple of uh, one of the practices here, and, and the vets came in, and they look like they're in shape, and they're ready to go and defend. Hmm. Keith, what do you think? Uh, what do you see happening this year? Well, just to go back to last year, it was a ride. Um, I'm still exhausted from it. It was, <laughs> and and I think the bar has been raised somewhat too. I, I think the I think the expectations will maybe not be for first place, but certainly to do well again like we did last year. And I I think as as long as we do well in the second half like we did last year, 
I think Bob and Gavin have been good in, in getting getting guys in after the Christmas after the trades or for the trades, and as long as they can build up for the end, I, I think we'll do okay. I, um, to get into the playoffs, so that I would assume that we'll get into there, and then from there, I, I think we'll do well.